The following is a presentation of TFNN. Live at TFNN, The Money Masters. Now, The Money Masters. Good morning, Money Masters and Treasure Hunters. Welcome to the April 4th, terrific Thursday edition of the Money Masters Show. I'm your host, Steve Rhodes, and thanks so much for joining me, folks. I am grateful for your presence here today, and my outcome, as always, is to help you to become a better Money Master and to provide you with the tools that empower human potential, because living up to our potential is something that we must master each and every day. So let's start today by putting ourselves in a peak physical state. You know, the easy way to do that is just simply change your physiology, change your body. Right now, you can make the biggest change. Just simply put those shoulders back, stand up. Maybe, you know, if you're sitting in a chair, hey, it's not a bad time to just stand up for a second. You stand up, you change your physiology. It's how you start to put yourself in a peak state. In fact, you want to find a sense of strength you know there's a certain way that you can probably place your feet and your arms and maybe just visualize walking down that 18th fairway as if you were going to win the masters golf tournament how would you walk if you were going to do that doesn't matter whether you play golf or not you can just simply envision that now what i want you to do after you've changed your physiology the next aspect of really putting yourself in a peak physical state becomes your focus in your words and so I'm going to combine those two. Imagine if you woke each day and the first thing you did was you put yourself in a state of mind where you said to yourself this. You said, you know, Steve, here's an opportunity for me to celebrate like never before with my own power and my own ability to get myself to do whatever is necessary. This is is so important, folks, because we will act consistently with our view of who we truly are. Whether that view is accurate or not doesn't matter. It's just simply whatever our view is. It is a meeting of preparation with opportunity that generates the offspring that most people call luck. What you and I know, it's not luck at all. Well, each day, it can be your lucky day. Just simply put yourself in a peak state and make sure that you say, here is the opportunity for me to celebrate like never before with my own power and my own ability to get myself to do whatever it is, whatever is necessary. Of course, I say, take massive action. Let's go take a look at the massive action we've got in these markets here right now. You've got the Dow up 69 points, S&P's up 8, Composite up 5. You've got the uh, small caps up 2, small caps the uh, laggard out here. Percentage-wise, it's the S&P leading the charge up a half a percent. Google off 6 bucks, Apple down 2, Microsoft off 16 pennies, Intel up 11, Cisco up 4 pennies, leading the charge the upside. I, I, this must be a repeat show of yesterday. I think these guys were leading the charge yesterday. Panera Bread, P-N-R-A. We'll go peek in on that uh, stock symbol. Uh, that's up $5.80 right now, up about 3.5%. Toyota Motor taking advantage of the weakness of the uh, yen out there, up $4.61. Of course, you've got the uh, yen currency truly off to the uh, moon, Alice. The YCS, that is the uh, pro share ETF for that. That's up 6% this morning, up $3.50 out there. Joseph A. Banks. Boy, if you ever want a suit, they sure got the commercials out there. Buy one, you get the store. You get the, They give you the keys to the store. You get to take home a couple of extra suits out there. J-O-S-B is a ticker symbol. They're up 6% this morning, up $2.50. BlackRock Industries, BLK up 260 CF Holdings up 243 Monsanto, the seed company out there, M-O-N, up $2.39. Franklin Resources, good old Ben Franklin, B-E-N is the uh, ticker symbol. Uh, they, too, are trading up this morning up a couple of bucks to the downside as i mentioned google leading the charge dollar wise off seven bucks behind them of course you've got the fxy that's the uh, currency share for the uh, year uh, for the uh, yen out there uh, apple down 284 teradata corp tdc off about almost two dollars netflix off a buck 50 com vault systems up a buck 50 off a buck 54 uh, genesee and wyoming they're off a buck 50 ibm down a buck 40 our call number is 877 
nine two seven six six four eight. I see somebody in the den posted something about uh, Bubba Watson's hovercraft out there. If you haven't seen that, uh, if you haven't seen uh, that, folks, I don't know what you Google. Uh, probably Bubba Watson uh, hovercraft. I got a nice email from my youngest daughter uh, yesterday. She's up at uh, University of Florida, and uh, she asked if I had seen that. I had not seen that, and it is a, a cool video uh, for sure. And of course, I reminded her. I can't remember the date. Maybe it's June 15th. I reminded her that Father's Day was coming up pretty soon, and I would think that would be a a nice thing to uh, have. I didn't get a response back from her. I wonder why. But that is a a cool – I hope that is the golf carts of the uh, future out there. Of course, I can see things getting a little out of hand, maybe with a a couple of golfers that I know that occasionally have a bit too much to drink before we get into the 19th hole. Anyways, let's go take a look at the uh, indexes out here. We're going to start off looking at the S&P 500. The S&P 500 moving down yesterday for sure, uh, but uh, just not being able to break through to that 1540.72. That really is a a key. That's one of the key levels out there, 1540.672. Instead, yesterday, closing out at a a level of uh, 15.53.69, 1553.69, only getting down to 1549.80. We have not received a rejection of that October 11, 2007 swing point. You've got to be tired of me saying that, but it is what it is. And until we get a rejection either to the upside or to the downside, and again, what I mean to the upside is a test of 1576.09, that's the high of that swing point. If we get a test, we get over that, we close back below it, then you'd have your first rejection of that swing point most likely on light volume, or you just simply had some nice volume. You had acceleration of volume yesterday, no question about it. But what we didn't get was we didn't get a break of that swing point. And as long as you're inside a swing point, and until you get outside of that, you know, then it's game, game to the uh, top of that swing point. And so that is still in place. Of course, we have, uh, you know, bearish candles out here. The bear is really setting up shop. Uh, They're making it very difficult for the uh, bulls. Big time uh, difficulty for the uh, bulls out here. You got this little bear sash candle that took place on April uh, Fool's Day. Got a bearish golfing candle from uh, yesterday. So it's going to have what is likely to happen here. Because of where the bears have set up their uh, line, is you'd see a spike of 1576.09, and then you'd see a close back below. All you need to now see is not just a close back below 1576.09. You'd like to see a close below 1573.66, because that is the resistance area of the bearish engulfing candle that was created yesterday. That is on the S&P 500 out there. Let's go take a look at the uh, other indexes, and then we'll go take a look at the ETF structures out here. Let's take a peek at the uh, Russell 2000. We covered this during the first hour this morning. The Russell 2000, the weak link out here, uh, having no real bounce here today. So this is the uh, index that you want to be all over from a short standpoint. As soon as we get another sell signal, that may really come in tomorrow. It doesn't have to come in uh, today out here. Uh, but what the Russell 2000 is uh, doing looks like it is just camping out, ready to try to blow through. Now, it's not so much that it's a swing point, but I do take a look at gaps as being a version of a, a swing point out there. The real swing point here inside the Russell would be down at uh, February 26. But you need to respect gaps for what they are, and they are very strong uh, very strong areas of support or resistance, or should be. Now, in the case of the Russell 2000, the high from March the 4th is 916.69, and yesterday, as the Russell came crushing down, it only got down to 916.84. So it stopped, what was that? I don't know, uh, 20 pennies, 20 cents away from that. So maybe it's just recharging to be able to take on that line where the uh, bulls are. And of course, the next area where it would travel down to would be the February 26 area, 894-ish to 902 as the uh, range. Of course, if we do take a look at uh, retracements from November 16th, all the way up to the high that has been put in so far on March 15th, the .382 level, 881.25. At a minimum, that's what uh, one should get out if the market does decide to go ahead and uh, correct here. So that's on the Russell 2000. Uh, Let's go take a look. And we know that there's trouble under the uh, covers, but let's go take a look at the uh, composite here, the composite forming a, uh, you know, again, you talk about setting up a line 
of uh, bears. So the, as far as where the bulls and the bears are hanging out, well, the Russell 2000 doing its magic. It's been doing its magic here ever since this uh, candle from March the 18th. That was the first bearish engulfing candle uh, that it had. You had this little gap down right here on March 21st, so that uh, confirming the line of resistance. You then had a, uh, a bullish engulfing candle on April Fool's Day, on April 1st, and then again yesterday. So there's a three drive to a top pattern. You've got a 1 to 1.272, A to B equals CD inside that uh, C to D leg that is out here. And uh, really just simply all the bears are, are camping out here at that 3273-ish uh, type range. Why is that important? Well, look. It's very important to know where bulls and bears are hanging out, especially when you see such a uh, line. You know, it's not like there's one pl pl platoon out here. You've got at least three platoons, four platoons that I can actually see inside the uh, composite. And why is that important? Because if that area gets taken out, it tells you that there's a strong trend underway, that, you know, the bears just simply got trampled over. That is not the case, and you need to respect where all those bears are camping out. Uh, let's go take a look at the uh, Dow. The Dow is a, a different animal, a different story out here. So let's go take a look at it. Not that it doesn't, sh uh, you know, provide some uh, bearish candles, but typically the Dow has been doing one-day wonders out there, one-hit wonders. And, uh, yes, Yesterday seems to be no different. Now, today you don't have a, a bullish candle, but it's early in the uh, trading session. Yesterday, what do you have? You've got a uh, bear sash candle out here. Now, the resistance level, the old resistance, it now has become support. We're going to simply just use the high of uh, March the uh, 15th out there. That's the level of 14,539. That level was tested yesterday, but it closed above it. It closed at 14. 550 got down to 14 525 so you can see that it still is the dow is the stingy one out here the dow does not want to give up even though ibm here is uh was trading down uh, i don't see it on my uh, main screen you know, it's trading down a dollar seven right now we'll go take a look at ibm uh, if i can remember to do that see what kind of volume it is that we're looking at here but really the dow is something to be paying attention to in the early show the nine o'clock show we looked at the uh, dow futures and the number the dow fut the uh, dow cash here out here the dow jones uh index that you want to take a look for a, a break a little signal that a, a correction really is underway and the dow is going to start participating is going to be a close below 14 539 14 that is an area of support right now a close below that would also likely be a close below that nine period walk of fame that nine period ema out there uh, let's go take a look at the NDX 100. Uh, we did say Google was trading down, so let's go take a look at the NDX. The NDX 100 here, uh, it really hasn't broken through. It's got an area of support that it needs to uh, break through. Of course, the NDX also has bears camping out uh, inside uh, it, and those bears up at the top, and yesterday was another bearish engulfing candle. You have it like every other day, it seems like. Maybe we'll set up for another bearish engulfing candle tomorrow. And what I'm referring to is if you take a look at the session from April, April Fool's Day from April 1st, bearish engulfing there. Uh, then you have one from yesterday as well. So, and what you've really got is you've got this little support area that was established by the gap up on March 5th out there. That low is 277612. 877-927-6648. We'll be right back. What type of investor are you? Conservative, moderate, or aggressive? No matter your investor personality, your overall portfolio should reflect your financial goals, time horizon, and your risk tolerance. Help ensure your portfolio is appropriately invested with an asset allocation plan from Morgan Stanley Wealth Management. Simply picking the right stocks is not enough. Research has shown that choosing the right proportions of stocks, bonds, and cash is essential to the success of your long-term investments. Morgan Stanley believes a carefully selected portfolio can lower volatility and increase investment return potential. Find out about what an asset allocation and a Morgan Stanley Wealth Management financial advisor can do for you. Call Angela O'Brien, first vice president and financial planner of the Clearwater, Florida branch at 727-441-6108 today to discuss your personal financial needs. Asset allocation does not assure a profit or protect against loss in declining financial markets. Investments and services are offered through Morgan Stanley Wealth Management, LLC. Member SIPC. 
with the launch of Tiger TV. TFNN has brought our programming to the next level. With Tiger TV, you can gain access to each host's charts and computer screens as they host their daily stock program. Whether it's Tom O'Brien, Steve Rhodes, Basil Chapman, Ken Shreve, David White, Larry Pesavento, Victor Jones, or Daryl Martin, you can catch all of our technicians hosting their programs live and archived on Tiger TV for your viewing pleasure 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. If you haven't checked out Tiger TV, then visit TFNN.com and see what you're missing. You've always taken the long view when it comes to investing, but what if there's an opportunity right under your nose? What if you could be more responsive to market trends to seek to boost your portfolio performance right now while seeking to reduce your overall risk? At Direction Funds, we connect investors with alternative strategies that seek to maximize their returns. Smart investors deserve smart alternatives. Find yours at directionfunds.com. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risk charges, and expenses of Direction Funds carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction Funds. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact the Direction Funds at 800-851-0511. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. Investing in index funds may be more volatile than investing in broadly diversified funds. Distributed by Rafferty Capital Markets, LLC. Many of our new listeners have heard about the Tiger's Den, but wondered, what exactly is it? The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information, in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of your favorite TFNN shows, plus see all the charts as they happen, live, during those shows, and have access to all those charts. You can test drive the Tiger's Den, absolutely free, for 30 days. It will greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets. Details on the Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. McEwen Mining is a high-growth, mid-tier producer in the Americas with a market capitalization of $1 billion. Experienced mining executive Rob McEwen, as chairman, CEO, and president, owns 25% of the outstanding shares of McEwen Mining and has put in place an ambitious business plan with the goal of qualifying for inclusion in the S&P 500 by 2015. With $70 million in cash and liquid assets as of the end of 2012 and completely debt-free, McEwen Mining is poised for growth. Production in 2013 is forecasted to grow at 24%, reaching 130,000 gold equivalent ounces. And over the next three years, McEwen Mining projects that their production will increase to 290,000 gold equivalent ounces, almost a three-fold increase from last year's totals. If you'd like to find out more about McEwen Mining, click on their banner on the front page of TFNN.com or check them out on the NYSE or TSX under the symbol MUX. This segment is brought to you by TFNN. Test drive all the newsletters for free at TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow's up uh, 45 right now. Composite in the uh, red as the Russell's just turned uh, red as well. S&P still up uh, five points out here. Let's go uh, check in on the ETFs. Uh, so if we take a look at the, we'll start off with the uh, SPIs here. Now, the SPIs also not being able to break outside of that swing point from October 11th. Now, we know that the SPIs got inside that swing point on light volume. Volume, by the way, on that swing point is $233 million. The uh, Bottom portion of the swing, 154.54. Uh, yesterday, the SPY got down to a level of 154.82, so it didn't even get all the way down uh, to that level, just like the S&P cash itself. The top portion is 156.52. Now, volume to the downside yesterday, 154 million shares, most definitely coming into the most recent, that March 5th area with volume. That's that gap up level. So coming in there with volume, uh, did it actually hit it? 154.70 was the high of March 5th, and yesterday got down to 154.82. Didn't even uh, get all the way down there to give you some type of uh, test. What you also see out here is just a, uh, a short term. This is coming off the November 16th area. You can see the rising price channel. And so the S&P, uh, or the SPY, I should say, unable to crack that level. That's another thing that you'll be looking for here. You know, basically yesterday was pretty much a close, uh, a, a, a test of that uh, uh, price tr uh, price uh, channel out here. You'll want to see a break of it just like we have inside the IWM. So only the IWM has broken that little ultra short-term rising price channel. This is going back to the uh, session of November 15th, November 16th out here. 
In fact, let's go pull up the IWM because this is what you want to see inside the spies, the diamonds, the whole kit and caboodle out here. Now, this is why we've got a weakness and, and also continued weakness inside the uh, Russell. So you can see what seems to me to be going on. It's large cap stocks trying to pull the S&P up to have it test its swing point high and really struggling to the uh, downside on these uh, small caps out here. A lot of uh, difficulty under the covers when you start taking a look at the summation indexes across the uh, board uh, out here. The Russell 2000, you can see it clearly broke that rising price channel. Uh, it broke it slightly on April Fool's Day on March the on April 1st out there, but really coming back with conviction the last two uh, trading sessions and trading into that uh, swing point March 4th uh, with volume, big volume, twice the volume, 27 million shares on March 4th. As well, we had 35 million shares on March the 5th, and yesterday, uh, 65 million shares out there. So that's big volume. That is trouble in River City. Next area of uh, support out here is the February 26th lows. 47 million shares down there, and that price point is $88.79. Let's go take a look at the uh, diamonds, and then we'll take a look at the Qs. You can see the same rising uh, price channel here, and uh, yesterday, you know, uh, you, had, you had some accelerated volume, 7.6 million uh, shares out there. Uh, but that was really uh, coming into, let's see here, what was it really coming into? Not not a whole lot. You know, you're really dealing with the March 14th uh, level inside the uh, diamonds. Uh, diamonds, really, the Dow, just not willing to uh, give up uh, just yet, putting up a, a good fight. Uh, let's go take a look at the uh, Qs. Now, in the Qs, you'll see a number of different patterns if you're watching us on Tiger TV. And uh, remember, you can always get this show streamed live to your smartphone or your iPad or some type of pad out there. Just go to the homepage of TFNN.com. Over on the right-hand side, you'll see the uh, button with the three smartphones. Click on that, and this show will stream live to you. And, again, the archive of this show is on Channel 10. In the case of the uh, Qs here, uh, the Qs, maybe today we'll see a test. Now, you, 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 let me get rid of the uh, Gartley pattern out here. We know we know there's been a .786 Gartley pattern in this, what seems like forever out here. Uh, we can take a look at Let's go ahead and actually even get rid of that line. I'm just going to clean a few things up here for you so that it makes it a little bit easier when you're following along on uh, Tiger TV. So the Qs here, the real level of support is March 4th. That level has been tested. Uh, been tested twice and held. That price point is sixty seven sixty nine. Now the lower part of that gap uh or is is really the March fifth low. Uh that is it should, should say the higher part of the gap. Uh, that is the March fifth low, which is sixty eight dollars and eight cents. Uh the the volume there thirty five million shares. Now as the Qs moved down yesterday, they did it with the same type of volume. So not explosive volume coming out of the uh, Qs to the uh, downside uh, yesterday, and right now today testing the uh, trend channel here. So just like we saw inside the IWM, I think the Qs uh, look to me to be the uh, uh, where we're going to see the next set of signals here if there's going to be some cracks in the ice out here. And the first crack would be just like we saw in the IWM. In fact, I probably can put these two side by side if I am, well, let me just do it like this here. If I'm ingenious enough, uh, which I think I am, uh, let's do this here. So we're going to put the two side by side because these are the patterns that you're going to want to be paying attention to. Looks like we'll have to do that as we come back from break. So I'll get this lined up, and then we'll take a look at the IWM. That'll be on the left-hand side of the chart, the Q's on the right-hand side of the chart. Or just give me a call at 877-927-6648. We can take a look at your stock chart as well. <laughs> Tom O'Brien's daily newsletter, Market Insights, gives you Tom's daily commentary on the broad market, including the Dow, NASDAQ, and S&P, plus specific trade recommendations. With Market Insights, nothing is left to guessing. With the market at record levels, volatility is here, and now is a perfect time to take advantage of a two-week free trial to Tom O'Brien's daily newsletter, Market Insights. As recently as March 26th, Tom advised his subscribers to liquidate their four short short-term equity holdings, closing out all four positions for a combined 15.9% profit. And on April 1st, Tom advised his clients to sell their longer-term position in AIG warrants, locking in more than a 40% profit in just that one trade. If you'd like to see the kind of newsletter Tom O'Brien sends out to his subscribers each morning, then sign up for your two-week free trial to Market Insights today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. 
No matter where you listen to TFNN programming, we want you to know that you can always access your favorite shows on demand through TFNN.com. TFNN airs live programming every market day from 9 till 6 p.m. Eastern, and you can view each program by accessing Tiger TV through our homepage. We even have an easy link for all mobile devices, including iPhones and iPads, located at the top right of the TFNN homepage. But if you don't have a mobile connection that keeps up with streaming live video, then you can simply visit TFNN.MOBI in the browser of your smartphone for live streaming audio of all of our programs. The mission of TFNN is to educate our audience directly and interactively through our interactive website and call and radio talk shows. TFNN is able to teach all levels of investors the technical skills needed for trading in today's marketplace. In order to get the best information available, TFNN has assembled the most respected financial minds in the country to provide the most current news and comprehensive advice available. TFNN.com, educating investors. Daryl Martin coined the phrase diagnostic trading and we're happy to announce that his diagnostic box spread analyzer has finally been released. The diagnostic box spread analyzer helps you easily identify the best box spreads on Nadex in seconds, plus you receive access to the diagnostic deviation levels as well as step-by-step -step training videos teaching you how to trade Nadex spreads so you can quickly master the mechanics of this simple yet powerful trading instrument. By pulling live data from the Nadex Exchange, the Diagnostic Box Spread Analyzer does all the math for you, calculating risk, reward potential, distance to break even for both outright spreads and spreads used to hedge the underlying market. Visit the front page of TFNN.com today to get your two-week free trial to Daryl Martin's Diagnostic Box Spread Analyzer and gain access to the valuable information it can provide when trading the Nadex Box Spreads. In quiet markets, investors search for new trading opportunities. We'd like to introduce you to a new product that provides opportunities even in flat markets. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a new and innovative Chicago-based exchange registered with the Commodity Futures Trading Commission. And unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their trading platform. Nadex never charges a fee to use their platform, which even includes real-time charts and full customization capability. Nadex's unique short-term binary options allow traders and investors to capitalize on strategies even when the underlying markets are quiet. Nadex's innovation has allowed them to come up with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at Nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. This segment is brought to you by TFNN. Test drive all the newsletters for free at TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow up 15, a composite off 6. Uh, S&P uh, is up a couple of points here, and the Russell 2000 just slightly uh, green. We're taking a look at the IWM and the uh, Qs out here because the IWM has uh, cracked a uh, you know has cracked and is moving. Uh, has certainly got lower to move. We might see a little counter trend out here, but the uh, the IWM the small caps uh, gave the uh, first signal as it uh, fell out of the rising price channel, and that's really it's an ultra short. I won't say ultra because uh, short term because it's really going back to November sixteenth. So a smaller rising price channel that we have out here and we're taking a look at it on uh, april uh, fool's day on april 1st you saw here with the if you're watching us on tiger tv the iwm is on the left hand side of the chart where my cursor is at and as it closed at the uh, level of 93.16 it finally broke through that rising price channel in the case of the uh, Qs here which i've also got up on my screen uh, you can see coming off of the november 16th area so now you've got them both coming off of november 16th right now today the area is being uh, tested so you get a close outside of uh, on the underside of the uh, rising price channel. I would say really the close you'd be looking for is back below 6808. That was from the uh, gap up on uh, March 5th. You'd have the Qs being the uh, next uh, ETF out there uh, suggesting that it is ready to begin a larger retracement. Now the Qs, they do have strong support. So the IWM looks like the better trade setup than the actual Qs here. The Qs have strong support at that March 4th level uh, out here where it gapped up. And the volume also on March 5th was 
35 million shares, whereas yesterday, 35 million shares to the downside and not actually testing uh, that area. So far this morning, volume-wise, 9 million shares in an hour of trading. So pretty decent volume. Looks like volume may be accelerating inside the uh, queues this morning. But we know we've got weakness inside the uh, Russell 2000 out here. So that's just comparing the two side-by-side side. inside the uh, SPY and the uh, uh, diamonds, as we take a look at the uh, spy out here, the spy's got a little bit uh, further to go uh, to be able to crack uh, that rising uh, price channel. As far as the uh, price point, probably it cracks it right around the level of about maybe it's right around 155, I would say, you're at 155.50 right now. So probably about 155 is uh, where it would start to uh, crack uh, that level. Of course, the real key number to be paying attention to would be 154.54 because that is the low of the swing point from April 11, 2007. Let's go take a look at some of these uh, stock charts out here uh, for things that are popping and dropping. How about let's go take a look at a hammer that uh, appears to be failing uh, this morning, and that is inside uh, Teradata. Corp TDC is the uh, ticker symbol. Right now that's trading at uh, 53 bucks. Let me re I know it didn't gap down like this, but let me go ahead and uh, refresh my screen. At least I don't believe that it gapped down like this. There we go. Now we take a look at uh, TDC. And one of the things that we're going to do, let me draw the line here. And I don't know if it's today that it uh, busted the hammer yet. Yeah, it's, it is, uh, or it looks like it might have done it yesterday. So we've got a hammer candle on this. Hammer candle, very strong candle formation for where the bulls are hanging out. Why have I lost my, that's not good. Lost my mouse here. There we go. Let's try this. Give me a moment here. Just a slight technical uh, challenge uh, uh, inside my system. There we go. Okay, I've got control back again. So we got a hammer candle that came in here on December the uh, 5th. So we're going to go ahead and draw the line across the uh, screen. Uh, December the 5th, you make a, uh, it makes a low. Uh, Teradata Corp, TDC, the ticker symbol we're looking at, makes a low at $56.10. Bulls rushed in on that day, got a close at 57.94. The actual high was 58.03. Very nice hammer candle, followed up by a uh, bullish engulfing candle, followed up by a little piercing candle on December the 10th, and then the little gap up on uh, December the 11th. That was telling you that there was a, a change in trend. That was one of the first signs that there was a, a change in trend that was uh, going on. There's some other signs as well, but those are enough to uh, indicate. In, in fact, what it did now, what you knew the Teradata, I didn't say that this was a trade to take as a long position because what it was going into was going into a, a gap down that had volume to the downside. That was 8.8 .8 million shares on November 1st, and that should have acted as an area of resistance, and, in fact, it did just for a, a bit. We'll put a, a line across the screen. We'll go ahead and make that uh, black, and that's the... Uh, uh, that's the uh, we'll use the upper boundary portion as well, which is from the uh, day that it gapped down. So there's our two areas of of resistance that we have out here, and really just held for a short period of time before it went up and made a slightly higher high on January 25th out there. But the volume as it was doing that was 2.5 million shares, really being benchmarked against the 8.8 .8 million shares on November 1st. And even if you take a look at it on uh, the October 31st day where it gaps down from, that has 3 million shares. So you, you know that that uh, move is not uh, real out here. Looks like it formed an A to B equals CD on the way up. Maybe that's what it wanted to actually do and complete. Let's take a look at that. Yeah, so it formed, it completed its one-to-one -one A to B uh, equals CD up pattern. Now, though, what it has done is it has broken through that hammer candle. That hammer candle low, 56.10. Yesterday's close out here was 56 Oh seven. You don't like to see a break of a hammer candle because bulls should always be out there defending their position. It means the bulls were no longer in sight. Now what we have is that hammer candle becomes a B point. And as we take a look at the volume on this candle, 3.5 million shares base. Uh, yesterday you came down with only 1.2 million shares, but today you've done 1.9 million shares. That is a B point that is being broken with volume, big, big time volume, because this is 1040. It's only an hour and 10 minutes into the trading session, so it should clearly have enough volume to take out that hammer B point out there. So now let's take a look at the larger A to B equals CD down. That looks like is being set up here inside Terra Data Corp, TDC. So now let's take a look at 1 to 1 A to B equals CD. Takes you to 44.78 out there. Looks to me like less than a .618 retracement on that B to C leg, but let's go actually measure it because my eyes could be wrong, and it is. Looks like maybe closer to a 50%. 
uh, retracement. That says uh, perhaps more than a one to one A to B equals C D down. That would say your range is right around the thirty eight to forty four level. At forty four, you come all the way back to August of two thousand and eleven. It's got some decent volume out there. So let's go uh, d uh, draw the line across that. So the volume, as uh, Teradata makes its way into that level, 7 million shares. So that might be the area where you would see Teradata actually find some uh, decent support. We'll go ahead. We'll put that line in red across the screen. But this is a uh, confirmed uh, A to B equals CD down. I mean, it won't really be confirmed until 430, but volume-wise, uh, we're pretty good on uh, being able to call that, plus breaking the hammer candle out there. That's on TDC. Uh, let's go take a look at, uh, uh, I guess let's tool around here uh, quickly. You know, we haven't looked at, as we have not looked at any of the uh, sectors with inside the S&P 500. So why don't we do that? Why don't we go over and take a look and start off by taking a look at the energy sector. We're taking a look at the energy and the financial sector. Had Rick from British Columbia call yesterday, uh, you know, I was expressing that the energy sector here has been ticking down in the summation index ever since March 14th. Haven't seen the corresponding price move, and what that was really telling me was that you know, if you look at the XLE, if you go and uh, take a look at the weighting structure uh, inside of the components, you'll see that ExxonMobil, Chevron, Schlumberger, uh, you know, pretty much make up uh, almost 40, 50 percent uh, of the, maybe even more than that, of the actual index. I think there's maybe like 42 uh, equities inside the energy sector. So it's those other equities that are in there that are really struggling. Well, yesterday, down with volume. In fact, getting back inside the September 14th swing point. So it is back now inside the lower part of the range. That swing point on September 14th, by the way, was 15 million shares, and you never had volume to the upside. I don't believe we did have any volume. No, we never had volume to the upside as you got over uh, that uh, swing point. But coming back in, you got the uh, volume out there. So 77.35 was the uh, number you're trading at 77.29 uh, right now. And uh, that says volume, by the way, volume yesterday, 15.7 million shares versus 15.2 on March 14th. Now, now, once it's back inside the range, that absolutely sets up moving back now down towards the uh, perhaps the November uh, swing point out here, November 16th, uh, that price point being 67.77. So I would be nosing around. You know, you want to wait for some other signals out here, but I would be nosing around, taking a look at uh, possible trades inside the DUG. I forget the other one out there, ER something something. Uh, is the uh, direction share, I believe. Maybe it's not the ER, but you'd have to go onto the website and take a look at it. But now you've got the uh, XLE has broken back down inside the uh, range out there. Uh, and an initial close today, back inside or back below 77.35 would be just simply another uh, indication out here. Uh, you also, not you, but the XLE broke down inside the range again uh, back in February, February 25th out there, but 13.8 million shares. So yesterday a little bit more conviction uh, to the uh, downside. You find some support here at the uh, December, at the February 26th area between 75.40 low and 70. But it looks like the energy sector is really giving us signals all over the place that uh, it is tired of being up at the top and wants to move down towards the uh, lows out there. Now let's go take a look at the financial sector. The financial sector is well ticking down inside the uh, inside the uh, summation index. So you got some problems here in uh, the uh, inside the financial sector. The financial sector gave us the first time the bears that uh, really showed up here recently was back on March nineteenth. Gave us a nice little bearish engulfing candle, sixty five million uh, shares there. A little bit of uh, follow through, although small amount of follow through with this bear sash on April the uh, 1st out here. So you've got a pretty decent area of uh, support. I would just say a resistance, and I would just simply use the uh, swing point from March 14th out there. Now, what we also had was you had a, uh, a bear sash candle, dark cloud cover candle coming back into February 20th and February 15th out there. That said that that should have been a resistance level, and that is the February 19th high, 1794. Yesterday, as it came down, came down with some volume, 88 million shares. So that's 88 million shares to the downside coming into an area where it broke out of with uh, 44 million shares, 56, 60 million shares. So coming back with volume 
and uh, just slightly closing inside that support level, but not enough, not enough conviction. Today, right now, it's testing that area. That support level is holding. You want to see with conviction. Now, we had the conviction with volume. Now we want to see some conviction in price, which would be a close below 1794. Not like 17, not like yesterday's close. That's a, you know, that that's a weakling close. That was 1792. I'm looking at 1794. I don't want 1792 to be my conviction uh, inside the XLF. I want something. In fact, what you really want, you want to see it just simply close the gap from April the 5th out there. So you see the XLF get down into the 17, below 1780 out there, and then you start getting your conviction that, okay, the XLF2 is uh, tired and it's ready to, in fact, the XLF out here, um, you know, it could easily just simply come all the way back down to the uh, trend line out here. Uh, you know, what's that area? Maybe it's around, uh, well, it's going to take you back into the uh, January, uh, December 31st, January 2nd level out there, uh, which would be a decent retracement inside the XLF. That would get you down to maybe 1674, perhaps uh, 1641 out there, trading right now at 1803. So two of the big sectors inside the uh, S&P are giving you uh, some uh, real weakness out here. Let's go take a look at the technology sector. Of course, we know that has been a week, but technology, even though this has been weak, we didn't get the uh, signal that uh, did not get the signal that you would be looking for here. Uh, what we can see is, and what I'm referring to is, on uh, March the 5th, the technology sector, the XLK, that's what we're looking at, broke out with 12 million shares, 12.5 million shares, and that level has held as uh, support. You can see it was tested uh, back here on March the 18th with 6 million shares, tested again the following trading session with 7 million shares, not enough to bust it down, tested again on March 21st, 6 million shares, not enough to bust it down, tested yesterday with 8.4 million shares, so 8.4 going against 12 million shares, not not enough to bust it down. And what are we taking a look at today? Uh, so far today, 1.8 million shares. You are traveling below that uh, level. Day's not, and when I say that level, I'm referring to 29.94. Uh, the next level of support here, especially on light volume, ends up being the March 4th high, which is a price point of 29.78. So we're seeing signs of cracking. We just need... Quite frankly, thank you, Rob. It was the ERY that would be the uh, energy sector uh, short, I suppose, for the in the uh, inside the uh, triples out there, and that would be one that I would be taking a look at. But what you're going to want to really get your signal on is going to be the S and P 500, which has to crack that uh, that swing point low, or at least test the swing point high out there. But definitely uh, uh, trouble underneath the uh, covers at the present time. Uh, let's go take a look at a couple other sectors out here. Uh, let's go look at the utility sector. That would be the XLU. Let's go see, you know, kind of a defensive uh, play out here. Uh, yesterday, not really, uh, you know, backing off a whole lot. No real uh, reversal uh, signal. In fact, today you've got more of a bullish signal than we had a, a reversal signal yesterday. So, uh, in fact, obviously you had a .786 Garley that had formed here. That was still on my screen. And, you folks know that when you have a 786 Gartley pattern that fails, it oftentimes turns into a butterfly, and that certainly is what we have here. Uh, let's go take a look at the uh, butterfly pattern off of that same uh, level we were looking at, which was from October 19th. Let's go see what it actually has uh, produced out here. Well, wouldn't you know it, it's trying to make its way up to 1.6 when it had to smush my screen just a bit, and I'll do that. And, uh, and of course, I don't know if smush is actually a word out there, but it's certainly one that probably all of us have used at one point in time or another. Excuse me. 1.618 a butterfly is, in fact, uh, being formed off of that swing point. That takes you into about the $40 price level. You're at $39.28 right now. Maybe there's a 1.272 butterfly coming off of the August 1st, 2012 swing point. We'll check that out while we're going to break. 877-927-6648. Be right back, folks. Are you looking for a precision edge in the market? Something that can stack the odds in your favor? Then look into Larry Pesavento's new trading newsletter, Patterns, Profits, and Peace of Mind. In each weekly issue, Larry explains what's going to happen in the markets based on the pattern he sees developing and gives you actionable trade ideas based on those patterns. Plus, you'll get his detailed analysis on a variety of markets and sectors, including stocks, treasury bonds, the gold market, oil, the dollar, the forex market, and more. And you'll get the technical corner segment, which is a short but powerful weekly training session on trading. You'll 
you'll get access to all the patterns Larry is seeing in the markets, plus the Astro Harmonics and powerful Bradley stock market model that Larry utilizes for less than $5 a day. An extremely potent combination that will give you just the edge you've been looking for. Try patterns, profits, and peace of mind absolutely free for two weeks. Go to TFNN.com and click on the free trial link at the top of the page. That's an $85 value, yours free when you register right now. Get Larry's patterns, profits, and peace of mind and get the edge you've been looking for. Tom O'Brien's weekly newsletter, The Gold Report, has helped subscribers for over 10 years navigate the high-risk world of exploring and producing gold companies. And now's a great time to sign up for a free month-long trial to see the kind of insight that Tom delivers for his subscribers on a weekly basis. Every Monday, Tom O'Brien issues a quick update on the metal market, giving you his take on the HUI, XAU, GLD, dollar bonds, and much more. Tom follows Monday's update with a full gold report, which is delivered to subscribers Tuesday afternoon with detailed coverage of 24 separate gold or metal stocks, as well as another 10 to 15 stocks that he lets you know are on his potential watch list. Get your month-long free trial to the Gold Report today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Don't spend another year navigating the metal markets on your own. Act early in 2013 and make the most of your gold and metal market investments. David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits, and The Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long-term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy-winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full-time trader, and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light-speed world of ever-evolving high-tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two-week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. Let me tell you something, folks. I have people coming up to me saying, I just can't believe the amount of work that Steve does on his newsletter. Yeah. And I says, I absolutely agree. That is a recent clip from the Money Masters show that Tom and I do each day at TFNN. My newsletter service, Mastering Probability, is much, much more than a newsletter. Yes, it's outperformed the S&P 500 by 100% during the last 15 months. But more importantly, it's an extraordinary education, a roadmap for your success. And it's yours risk-free for the next 30 days. Just go to the homepage of TFNN.com and click on my name, Steve Rhodes, and then Mastering Probability. Because everyone needs a success strategy. For most, it's a competitive edge, the will to win, the drive to overcome any obstacle. Whatever you call it, winners find a way. Find your way to Mastering Probability today. Because your journey to extraordinary rewards is just one click away. Catch Basil Chapman as he uses his Chapman Wave methodology to call the markets. The Tiger Technician's Hour, next on TFNN. Welcome back, folks. Uh, before we went to break, we were taking a look at the uh, utility sector with inside the S&P 500, one of the uh, smallest weightings with inside uh, the S&P. We were taking a look at the uh, 1.618 Gartley butterfly, or butterfly pattern, I should say, that was forming. That was coming in off of the uh, swing point from October the uh, 19th out there. The reason why we were using that, I just simply had a 0.786 Gartley cell pattern uh, that was formed off of that that had failed. And as I have... Uh, communicated in the past is that when a 0.786 Gartley pattern fails, that's the beauty of them, is that when they fail, not only do they do a move of a move, they'll go and uh, turn into a, a butterfly. I don't know why they, uh, why they spread that. Does it happen all the time? Of course not. But does it do it a, a substantial majority 
probably you know number, uh, uh, percentage of the time, absolutely it does, and we see it time and time again. The uh, utility sector just being another one. Now what we have is we got a convergence here of really two expansion patterns off of two different swing points. Off of the swing point high, we use the same swing point low, but off of the swing point high from October 22nd, that's a price of 37.08 all the way down to the swing point low. So we're going to use that same anchor point. That is November 16th. That is a price of 33.92. You've got a one point uh, one point six one eight. Uh, uh, butterfly pattern that would form right in the forty dollar area, whether it's thirty nine sixty eight, forty dollars, somewhere right around there, a little bit above where it's trading right now, which is thirty nine thirty one. We also have a one point two seven two butterfly coming in off of the uh, swing point from August the first. August first swing point high thirty eight fifty four. That means the expansion from that high to the low on November sixteenth. If you took that difference, multiplied it times one point two seven two, and added it to the bottom of November the uh, 16th or 15th out there. That would give you that price projection around 39.68. So looks like that is where the utility sector wants to uh, head to uh, before it uh, may give you a, a reversal signal out there. Now, let's just do this. Let's put this on the uh, little longer-term chart out here so we can scrunch it a little bit more inside the uh, chart. And let's come from the uh, swing point high here back in December of 2007 down to the low that was put in here in March of 2009. And what we'll also see taking place at $40, we'll see on the longer term, we'll see a Gartley sell. So now we've got, now go ahead and uh, draw that in for you. And that is going to be a .786 Gartley sell pattern at $40. So now we've got three patterns. This is a beautiful thing. Three patterns coming in in the same place, same price point area, which is the $40 area inside the utility sector. This is the weekly chart, so the weekly chart has certainly more bearing than the uh, daily chart that we were taking a uh, look at. And it looks like clearly what the utility sector wants to do is move up another 70 cents or so in that $40 area, where it should run into, as your pilot, it should run into some pretty strong turbulence up there. Now, the beauty is if those two butterfly patterns fail, and then, of course, if this .786 gar uh, Gartley cell pattern fails, what's that going to turn into? Yes, it'll make that move a move, head up to 4477, but that will also likely turn into a larger butterfly pattern. But one thing at a time, not so fast. You've got uh, three patterns here uh, setting up at the uh, same time. So we'll come in. We'll, we'll, you know, we don't uh, really pay much attention to the utility sector, but uh, we will. We'll keep that on our radar screen so that as we uh, do our shows here, we can watch these patterns form. Utility sector probably also uh, giving us, will, will be giving us a signal of a, a reversal in the uh, marketplace as well. Stay tuned, folks. We've got uh, Basil Chapman uh, coming up next, and then we have Larry Pesavento. Uh, after Larry, we've got Daryl Martin, David White, and then the Tom O'Brien Show from uh, 4 to 6. And always remember, folks, you have an amazing power within yourself. And that power is so strong, it'll create a life of abundance, cure incurable diseases, build billion-dollar businesses, paint magnificent masterpieces, but most of all, create fantastic, loving families. We're turning over the show to one of our brothers, Mr. Basil Chapman. So stay tuned for Basil's show. Have a great day, folks, and thanks for being a part of the TFNN family. Take care.